Welcome to Module 4, Project Goals, Objectives, and Activities of the CDOT Fiscal Year 2015 Grant Application Technical Assistant Modules. During this module, you will receive information that will help you craft your goals, objectives, and activities for your CDOT grant application based on the guidance that came with the application. This is Lindsay, and I have with me here Jan. And we uh, have been role playing a little bit with a county called Fake County and walking through how we would go about the thought process and in, in designing basically an outline for writing our grant application based on what project we identified for this fake county. So we'll continue that discussion in Module 4. You may want to visit Module 2, which is the problem identification section where we introduce the data that we use to uh, base our project, and then Module 3, which is the project rationale section where we narrow down the list of options that we want to concentrate our project on and now we'll we'll get started with project goals and objectives and activities hi Jan hi hi so I guess we're ready to get started with these project goals objectives and activities you can see here from the guidance that come with the application that this section is 20 points, which is a lot of points for this section. And uh, it lays, gives some really specific criteria and explanation about what the difference is between goals, objectives, and activities. So I thought maybe the first thing we'll do is read this through pretty carefully, make sure that we understand what the difference between those things are, and then we'll look back at our project rationale uh, that we developed during our last module and then figure out how we go from there to writing goals, objectives, and activities. Does that sound like a plan? It does. Sounds good. So Jan, why don't you walk me through what goals mean? The, the goal is a broad statement about what the program expects to achieve. The goal is the description of the final anticipated outcome or result. So for example, it could be reductions in deaths or injuries due to motor vehicle crashes for a particular population. So for this project, it says we're writing one-year goals, and up above there, when it's giving us the instructions, it says we have to identify at least one um, goal. So we don't need to do uh, much more than that. Uh, I think it's a good idea generally to have your goals for this grant be really tied to the performance measure um, that you're trying, or the performance measures that you're trying to impact, mm -hmm. um, because that way it's really easy for CDOT to see how your goals tie to their performance measures, which will make it real clear for them and how they per report to NHTSA about how the projects they fund are helping contribute to the overall state goals. Right, that's a good idea. So goals, um, it says, have the following characteristics. They specify an expected program effect, so it's going to have some sort of measure. It identifies a specific topic population. Usually it's written as a declarative statement, so you're not going to write a question that you're answering. You're going to actually write a statement about what, what you intend to do. Um, and then as much as possible, you don't want to use jargon or things that grant reviewers won't understand. You want to keep it short, concise, easy to understand, and stated in positive terms because it's where you want to head. Let's look at an example that they have. Reduce the number of traffic fatalities among teens from 12 to 10 in Grand Junction from September 30th, 2015. So you can see here that this must clearly be related to um, a couple of performance measures that I remember from the from the earlier sections. One, just an overall reduction of, of traffic fatalities would help CDOT achieve its state level goals. And then this is specifically mentioning a, a target population of teens, which might also relate to the young driver measure on there as well. So let's go back to our project rationale and just remind everyone what we are, uh, what target population we selected. These are the performance measures that we have in our outline so far for the problem identification section. Um, to really, the, the main one is reducing the number of drivers age 20 or younger involved in fatal crashes. And I know we've been adjusting this uh, this outline as we go because we are kind of fine-tuning things and we uh, I know during the last webinar we I added actually a couple of target populations because we found some strategies that we wanted to uh, really really target but I think for 
the goals and objectives that we're going to write here, if the goal is supposed to really tie to your main um, performance measure, maybe we should do something around the younger driver uh, performance measure. Yeah, I think based on what we've discussed, that's really the group that we're trying to impact. And by doing that, we think we'll probably make an impact on the others, but the young drivers are our target area. This is the goal that we've crafted so far. Um, reduce the number of drivers age 20 and younger in fatal crashes in Fake County from 10 in 2012 to 8 by 2014. Uh, I, I think that this meets the criteria that I was talking to. It's really similar to the example that they have in uh, the guidance document. And it's very clear what performance measure our application ties to. It also specifically names uh, a location, our, our fake county, and also gives some some sense of a, of a baseline and where we're headed. Goals don't always have to be written in the way objectives do as SMART goals, but I think it's a nice way to be able to check back and see, you know, can we measure our outcome. Um, we, in the problem ID report, it said that we had 10 fatalities involving drivers age 20 and younger in 2012. So we thought that just setting our goal to reduce by 20% um, by 2014 seems reasonable. We won't actually be able to go back and check and, and make sure that we've achieved that goal until the 2016 problem identification report comes out. We'll be able to go back later and see if we met our goal. Objectives. So objectives is, an, is the next piece that the guidance addresses here. And I know from talking with CDOT and listening to some of the technical assistance calls that they have that really these objectives are what CDOT's holding grantees accountable to. The goals are great and they t tie to the performance measure, but it is possible that you know we may or may not achieve that long-term goal. What's really important is that the work that we're actually doing is tied to some sort of objective that we can measure and change. So Jan, why don't you walk us through the objective section here? Okay, so the objectives tell how the goal will be met. The objectives need to be closely related to the program or project you are using in order to meet your goal. For example, if your goal is to reduce unrestrained motor vehicle fatalities among adults in a certain community and your program involves conducting an enhanced enforcement campaign, your objectives will include measures of knowledge, attitudes, and behaviors related to the enhanced enforcement campaign. Objectives need to be written as SMART objectives. So SMART is an acronym that stands for Specific, Measurable, Achievable, Realistic, and Time Phased. So when you're thinking about whether your objective is specific enough, when you read your objective, you need to be able to identify who is the target population or who is doing the activity and what is the action or activity. Measurable means that you are stating how much change is expected. Achievable means you need to think about, can you really do this? Is it, a ta is it an objective that can be accomplished? Which also ties into whether or not it's realistic and is reasonable. And finally, time phased. You need to state when the objective will be met. Otherwise, it just seems like you could meet it at any time period and you're not giving yourself an ending criteria. So. In the guidance, CDOT has included a format that might help you write your SMART objectives. They tell you that you're trying to increase or decrease the count, rate, or percent of a subpopulation, specifying what the measure is in a geographical region from a baseline to a goal by a specific date. So, for example, you might want to increase the percent of teen drivers wearing seatbelts in Grand Junction from 79% to 83% by September 30th, 2015. It's kind of like smart objective Mad Libs. <laughs> That's right. And if you look at the example, the colors tie to the pieces of the Mad Lib that you're filling in. I think this is a great formula for us to try to use in our fake county. Just to remind ourselves what our project rationale was, we decided on a three-pronged approach to really impact teen driving fatalities, basically. So we want there to be some sort of teen component and parent component 
and a law enforcement component. And then we jotted down some ideas that we might be able to look at here. So I think uh, we can use this information as we look at our objectives. And then we have to remember that all objectives that we write have to relate back to our goal. So we can't write objectives on uh, distracted driving, for example, unless it has something tied to our goal, which is teen drivers. So writing about distracted driving for older adults wouldn't really fit under this goal. So um, I think for us, we just have to make sure to, to keep it tied to this GDL kind of concept that we explained in the rationale. Here's the first objective that we came up with. Now this one isn't quite a smart objective in the way that the Mad Lib uh, asks us to because it's really trying to measure coordination and collaboration with our partners. So I just wanted to capture this because a big part of what we do at our agency and what we want funding for is to continue to convene the Fake County Teen Driving Alliance. And so I wanted an objective to demonstrate that that work actually is measurable a little bit. It's just not um, as straightforward and numeric as some of the other objectives. So in order to conduct all of our activities that we're going to have through the rest of our project, we really want the support of everyone. So we wrote this objective, increase levels of coordination and collaboration to support the implementation of evidence-based programmatic and policy strategies related to reducing teen motor vehicle fatalities among fake county teen driving alliance members by September 30th, 2015. Um, so it's a little long, but I think it packs a lot of information in there, and I think it highlights a couple of key words that um, CDOT will really like to see. That we're doing, we're increasing the collaboration and coordination of the people in our community that work with us on this issue to support evidence-based programs. So we really want to stress that we're not just meeting to meet, we're meeting to really um, get their help to support we're trying to get their help to really support the evidence-based strategies that we're going to implement. That makes sense. And by putting the September 30th, 2015, we're saying that we'll, we will be able to show this increase by the end of our grant cycle. Now, when we talk about the evaluation section, which is next, we'll have to think about ways that we might be able to measure people's um, involvement here because we're not clearly specifying a measure here. I mean, we indicate that it may be some measure of coordination and collaboration, but we haven't really articulated what that is in this objective. It's okay. It's not the best objective um, in the whole world in terms of a smart objective, but I do think it meets most of the criteria in terms of being specific and time bound and, and those types of things. So let's look at our second objective, which these are going to relate to our um, components of our program. So you mean that'll be that we have an objective for teens and one for the parents and one for law enforcement? Exactly. So objective two is increase the percent of fake county high school students who wear seatbelts from 70% to 80% by September 30th, 2015. So if you remember back to when we were writing notes in our problem identification section, we mentioned that we did seatbelt surveys last year and at five different high schools and 70% was the average seat or the collective seatbelt use rate for those across those schools. So we uh, thought that maybe it was reasonable. Yeah. For objective three, we are focusing on the parents, and we stated that we will increase the percentage of fake county parents who report accurate knowledge of the graduated driver's license law to 25% by September 30th, 2015. Now in this one, um, I noticed that we don't have a baseline. Is that okay? Well, we actually haven't done a baseline survey yet, and I think it'll be one of the first activities that we do, but we know that the state health department conducted a survey of parents in all of Colorado, and only about 6% of the parents reported accurate knowledge of the GDL law, and so we think it's reasonable that we could increase to 25%. So our fourth objective is related to law enforcement. Um, increase the percentage of law enforcement officers who report enforcing the graduated driver's license law in the last six months 
to 50% by, by September 30th, 2015. So similarly, I know the state did a survey of law enforcement officers uh, across the state and found that only about 25% of law enforcement officers were actively enforcing the law and had written a ticket in the last six months. Uh, their goal was 50% um, just to really try to get all of the law enforcement officers um, that do traffic related work to enforce the law when they do see a, vi a violation. So I think it's reasonable to put our goal at the same as what the state goal is, which is 50%. Um, and we can maybe put together some kind of baseline survey to assess what our rate is in our county uh, as one of our activities. Okay. Now let's talk about activities. Activities are really the meat of what you do. They comprise the plan of operation for the project and um, in a concise way, they really describe what we're going to actually do to achieve that objective. So I think we did a pretty good job of writing objectives that were measurable and that we can actually tell at the end of a year, did we accomplish that yes or no and be able to, to um, articulate that in our reports to CDOT. Our activities are more about the meat of what we're doing. And so um, this example here I think is good because it, it does what um, I think the instructions are asking us to do, which is include some process indicators that are appropriate for measuring progress on completing the activity and also making it specific about the timeline that the activity is going to be done and who's going to actually be doing it. Um, the other important thing when you're talking about activities is to make sure to put in enough detail that if you have something in your budget, uh, a line item to purchase a curricula or to you know, purchase brochures or to have pay people to, to help enforce a campaign that you've got activities that tie to those budget line items because that's what the budget office is looking at when they're ev evaluating your grant. Let's go back to what our objectives were and flesh out some ideas for activities. We're not going to have time to fully flesh out each and every activity for all of our objectives, but I'd like to just get a start so that we have a good outline and then we can kind of see how to format it and how much um, page, how many pages we have to play with once we pull together the other sections. This was our objective one, and again, it was related to the coordination and collaboration to support evidence-based programming. Our activity here that we wrote is conduct monthly fake county teen driving alliance meetings to implement activities under objectives two through four. So we know we have four objectives and that there's going to be a lot of activities. I just wanted to capture here some way that uh, the activity that we're basically holding 12 fake county teen driving alliance meetings and we play a big part of that. And then the people on the team are going to actually be helping us do our work. So I think as a sub activity, which is sometimes called tasks. So your activities that you're writing are sometimes called strategies, if, if you're more familiar with that. Um, but it's basically the, the bigger picture activity or strategy that you're trying to implement, something like conducting monthly meetings. The tasks, or maybe sub activities if you want to call them that, are really more the how to get there um, information. CDOT is not asking you to include tasks for each activity, but if it's necessary to really flesh out what you're going to do and to make it clear what your approach is so that the readers can understand what you're really doing, then feel free to, to do those. So what we've done here, um, for our outline is just to add some tasks. So I really want to assess the membership of the Fake County Teen Driving Alliance and invite new partners. Once we really flesh out all the activities that we're going to be conducting over the next year for this project, we want to make sure that we have all of the people at the table that we need. And then I also want to put in an activity with, to indicate that we're actually going to do a full-fledged action plan if we get this grant that'll highlight all of the specific activities and tasks that need to get done to meet our objectives and ultimately our goal. And we want to also identify in this action plan that we'll create who's doing what and how uh, this will all play out, whose responsibility, because we want to divide the the work among our coalition members. I think it's useful to see this laid out now because now I can see that our activity one, conduct, conducting the monthly meetings, does help us achieve our objective, which is to increase the levels of coordination and collaboration, and then how, again, those tasks just really like feed into what we need to do to actually complete 
the activity. I agree, and I think the other thing that we heard in Module 1's webinar around tips for grant writing in general is we really want to make the numbering logical for these objectives and activities. So we have objective 1 and then activity 1.1, which means it's goal 1, object activity 1, and then our tasks are, are named similar where we have 1.1a, so that if we ever wanted to visit this later, it's really easy to say all of these things relate to objective 1 um, and not have to go back and say, now what one does that tie back to? So I think that'll help us from an organizational standpoint. Let's look at objective two. So this is the one around wearing, uh, increasing teen seatbelt use in Fake County. This time we tried to just write activity. So rather than call them tasks, we called them activity, and then we actually made some sub activities. Um, so the main activity that we want to do is between January 1st, 2015 and May 30th, 2015. So that's the 2015 school year. The Fake County Teen Driving Alliance will hold a 12 week seatbelt challenge between five Fake County high schools. So that's our main activity. And so obviously it's kind of implied that that high school challenge will um, involve seatbelts, which will give them the tools they need to hopefully increase that seatbelt use rate to 80% like we specified. We, in order to get there, I just started um, a short list of activities. Obviously, this is a major undertaking, and we might end up needing more activities than this. But just to start, we need some agreements with the county high schools that they're going to participate. And uh, we also want to make sure that we highlight here for CDOT that we're going to do pre-post uh, seatbelt observational surveys so that it really calls out how we're measuring our outcome. This is all making much more sense to me now. We also mentioned about teens, though, that we were going to look at the curfew, I think. Were we going to try to enforce the curfew for the teens? Is that part of our objective? Oh, we did say a couple of things. So we, our main idea was to look at the curfew, to look at um, GDL passenger restrictions, and then these seatbelts. But I can't think of a really great way to measure how we can measure passenger restrictions and curfews. I'm wondering if we could incorporate those elements so still that piece of our rationale could stay in there, but we need to maybe rely on our law enforcement partners to uh, do that more enforcement piece. That makes sense. And we also seem like we have you know, a big enough undertaking here just focusing on the seatbelts. Right. And I also heard that in module one, too, that sometimes, you know, people make a mistake by taking on too much in their project, and then it's not the right amount of work for the right amount of budget. And so I do think we need to be mindful that we're scaling the projects appropriately. So I think if our seatbelt challenge really focused, or our high school challenge really focused on seatbelts, then that would really help us do that. Okay. For our objective three, we are trying to increase the parents who report accurate knowledge of the graduated driver's license law. The activity under objective three that we've created is that as a part of the 12 week high school challenge at the five Fate County high schools, students will recruit their parents to complete the online parent GDL course. So we think that by the parent, by the teens needing to recruit their parents, the parents will, will take the course for their teens and while doing so it will increase their knowledge. And so we also wanted to make a little bit of an incentive so that maybe the parents will participate and that the teens will want to engage their parents. So we said that parents that successfully complete the course will be entered into a drawing for an iPad which will be donated by a local business. And then since there's five schools, we thought we could make a little challenge between the schools, and the school with the largest percentage of parents completing the course will win $200 for their school that is donated by a local insurance company. That's great, and this is a clever way to add some more information just to help the reviewers get some context to what you actually plan to do while still sit stating your activity pretty simply. So that's why I'm guessing why you set it off in italics is just so that it's um, you know, makes it clear that your actual activity is that first sentence there and then the things in italics are just explaining more about more detail about what's happening there. Right, because we thought those were pretty interesting ideas to add that might um, kind of 
incentivize parents and teens to participate. Yeah, and another thing, you know, would be a great idea is maybe we can get the local business and the local insurance company to write us letters of support for the grant. So that way it's clear to CDOT when we put that in our in-kind um, allocation that we actually have commitment from those places to donate that money. Yeah, that mean, yeah, that would say that they already know that like we've thought about this and talked to them and we're not just putting it as an activity that we hope we can do. Now we could probably instead of doing the italics here, you could probably also do the subtasks like we did before mm -hmm. if you wanted to. Um, but I, you know, think either way, we can play with the formatting later. Um, well, because we will we like want to keep it consistent between all of our activities, right? Yes, yeah. When we finally finish this, we definitely want to keep formatting consistent throughout. These are just options. Let's go to objective four. Objective four is increase the percentage of law enforcement officers who report enforcing the graduated driver's license law in the last six months to 50% by September 30th, 2015. So we came up with four different activities here. Um, Two activities are actually related, activity 4.1 and 4.4 are related to making sure that we remind ourselves to get the baseline and follow-up data to be able to measure our objective. Uh, you don't have to do this here. We could have also put it in the evaluation plan, so we may have to see if we have space um, to include it as activity when the grants all pulled together. But I wanted to make sure that it was clear that we, in October, are actually going to conduct a survey based on the one that the state did, uh, we could just use that same survey but give it to our law enforcement officers so we know what's going on in our county. And then in March, we want to use the roll call video that's uh, already developed by the Colorado Teen Driving Alliance and we'll go to our local law enforcement agencies to educate them about the current law. And then uh, between January 1st and May 30th, we want to partner with the Fake County Police Department to host high visibility enforcement campaigns at our five Fake County high schools that are participating in our high school challenge. So that just addresses the issue that we had earlier around wanting to really you know, enforce the passenger restrictions and things like that, but we couldn't really figure out how to do that with our challenge from our perspective, but I bet our law enforcement officers can help. And then again here we added some clarifying things just to make sure that um, CDOT knows that we do plan to follow the best practice um, information around high visibility enforcement campaigns, although these have done most frequently with impaired driving and other speed and other types of uh, enforcement campaigns. I think the thing that makes them work is that they are advertised in advance and you know people kind of know that they're coming. And then we thought that just to gain support for the school, because the schools may be hesitant to invite us in if they think their kids are going to get a bunch of tickets and that might be disruptive, that we'll actually not give tickets, but the police officers will, you know, give uh, a warning. Or maybe we could even put something in there for them to reward people who are doing the right oh, thing. Oh, that's a good idea. I like that. So we might decide to put that in later. Um, and then our last activity is just to conduct the follow-up survey. So we're going to do the same survey that we conducted in October. We're going to do it again in September 2015, and that way we'll be able to see if we met our goal of 50% of law enforcement officers conducting, um, trying to enforce the, the law. Can we go back to activity four for uh, four point two for a minute? Mm -hmm. um, you said that the roll call video is already developed, but is that publicly available? I don't know where that is. It's actually just on CDOT's website. So there's um, a section on there for law enforcement, and you can get on there. There's also uh, pocket law enforcement guides that might help law enforcement understand the statute numbers and all the complicated things there are to remember about them. And then um, also just the, the roll call video is there. So all we need is a internet connection and we can just play that. Or we could just have the law enforcement officers point them to it to watch it on their own. Okay. So now that we've brainstormed the project goal objectives and activities, um, I just am going to plug them into our template here. And I know we're not completely done with writing maybe all the activities and all the um, tasks that we want, but I think our goal is solid, our objectives are solid, so we may want to add a little bit more to the activities section as we um, think through our project. And these are just examples, but the nice thing is about this section is this really is all your 
project goals, objectives, and activities section needs to look like. You don't need to add additional words or additional explanation beyond what is here. And if you've done a good job with the logic, it's very easy to tell, you know, you're in this screenshot here, your tasks are related to your activities, which support your objective, which helps you meet your goal. So you can really see all of that tied in together. And your project rationale, you already explained sort of the, the basic concept to your approach, so you don't really need to reiterate that here. The other thing that's nice about this section, and just leaving it simple, uh, we've left plenty of space and white space here. Um, you know, we may have to tighten it up a little if, if we run out of um, room once we add everything else because we only have eight pages, but it's really readable in this format, and I think as a grant reviewer, it'll make it easier to see what we're doing, see that it's logical, and we should get more points that way. Speaking of points, we probably should go and see what, make sure that we go through the evaluation criteria and kind of give ourselves an assessment and see how we're doing so far. Right, so here's the evaluation criteria. Did the applicant project goals impact one or more of the core performance measures? I think, it, yeah, it did. We um, have it specifically tied to the young driver performance measure, so that meets that. The goal describes the final anticipated outcome or results. So, for example, reductions in death or injuries to motor vehicle crashes for a particular population. Yes, again, we are reducing the number of 16 to 20 year old drivers in fatal crashes. Did we, did our goal meet the following criteria? Did it target a specific population? Yep, uh, young drivers. Declarative statement, no jargon, short, easy to understand. I think we'll actually score pretty well there. I think so too. Did our objectives include all SMART elements? Specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, and time-phased? You know, there's a few times when we might not have had the baseline measure initially, but I think we made a case that we are going to do baseline measures, or we even know where the state was. Um, as a whole and so we can compare ourselves to that so I think we did. Do our objectives clearly align with the project goal? Will our objectives help us achieve the stated goal? Yes we used the countermeasures that work to realize that we're going to target teens, law enforcement, and parents and so our objectives are based on those three groups of people to then achieve our goal. Do our activities logically describe how each objective will be achieved in detail, but in a concise way? I think so. I think, like you said, we might need to flesh out a few more activities and um, just make it a little bit uh, more descriptive by adding activities, but the ones that we've mentioned so far I think are good. And do our activities include process indicators appropriate for measuring progress on completing each activity as well as deadlines? Yes, um, for example, with the fact that we're going to hold that um, Teen Driving Alliance meeting, we said that we are going to do that every month. So at the end, when we're trying to do our process measures, we'll know that we um, did or did not have a meeting every month. Great, well, I think we're off to a good start. Maybe just add a few more activities and then we'll be done with that section. Uh, the next section is project evaluation, and I know it's very important for your project evaluation to tie very closely to your goals and objectives and activities. So we'll probably be revisiting these during the next module, which is project evaluation. Stay tuned.